So a little bit of context. I recorded this video uh, back before quarantine when I was still in New York. And I wanted to wait a little bit before putting it out because I wanted to be able to show some of the examples of the work that I did over this past year and in respect towards the students I didn't want to preemptively show anything that wasn't out to the public yet because if someone did that to me I'd be incredibly pissed um, and in this video I kind of really didn't explain what a thesis film is and how it's important to a student a thesis film is basically the culmination of everything that you've learned in all your four years of a bachelor's degree it is a film that is completely directed by you, decided by you. You can do whatever you want. You have freedom in all aspects, except the mo most important thing is that you have to complete it. It is also the pretty much highlight and huge standing point of your portfolio and your resume and what employers will look at to judge you based off of. So if it's not good or if it's not your best, that's going to reflect on you pretty much. Um, it is probably the most quintessentially important thing that you complete it or you complete it to the best of your abilities or that you just like, you just got to get it done. Um, and in terms of coronavirus this year, it's really a tragedy that has happened because a lot of these films that I have worked on this past year and a lot of these films that are put out by my school specifically are not going to be shown to a general audience in a theater, which is where they would usually be shown. Um, and they're not going to be seen directly by recruiters in the theater. And those recruiters aren't going to be able to talk to these students. And that is so tragic. And I cannot express that enough. So once I get the, like, links to the YouTube pages and to the websites of these thesis students that I've worked with. Um, as of recording this right now, I know one of these films is completely finished. Um, I'm going to be promoting the shit out of what I've worked on because at least for some of the films that I've worked on, the work is fantastic. I could not be more proud of what these students have created with other people and I am so I'm so proud to be included in the process of some of these projects. So keep a lookout for that and let's get right back into the actual video. So this video is going to be an informative piece on how thesis works in college for both undergraduate students who are not in their fourth year and graduate students who are in their fourth year and who are going to work on their thesis for their prospective year. Now, I am not in my fourth year or have completed my fourth year in any context. However, I have worked on a lot of thesis films over the current course of my time here in art school. And I think advice coming from an experienced worker on these student films for upcoming recruiter thesis students would be a great resource. That being said, I'm going to first start off with general advice to undergraduate students who are not in their fourth year about thesis films. When you're in an animation major, whether it be 2D or 3D, most of your assignments and experience through learning is coming through two different outlets. One, the assignments that your professors instruct you to do, and two, the work that you do at home or in your free time. And for one thing, the assignments that you do for your classes will most likely have you do every aspect of production yourself. Planning for character designs, keys, ties, in-betweens, cleanup, and potentially color depending on what level of polish your professor desires for that assignment. And that can be a lot of work in a lot of categories, and depending, since you are primarily learning from experience in this major, your end result might not be as good in a certain area as others. Like, if your keys are your strong suit and cleanup is your strong suit, then your animation won't shine as bright as your polish for the piece. However, taking on thesis work fixes this discrepancy. Instead of completing an entire scene start to finish by yourself, you'll be working on a specific part of the pipeline for a specified scene. That way, you can focus on this area and really make it as good as possible. And if you tell the thesis student what your strong suits are, or take on thesis work that is to your strong suits, you can not only be putting out good work, but also enjoying the process as well. Additionally, this experience helps you to understand the process of working on a team or collaborating with other people for a common goal. Focusing on one specific area also helps to give more insight to learn that technique or position in the pipeline better. 
I honestly feel as though I learned more about animation in my first year from just working on thesis scenes for a couple of weeks than I did months of my actual animation class. In any job you're doing for these students, the level of experience that you can gain is totally invaluable. Additionally, depending on the work that you do do, you can also add this work into your formal reel or put it on your resume. As a bit of a tip though, you should only really be putting animation specifically on your reel because that's where you're doing more specific work to you. You really shouldn't be putting a lot of coloring um, unless it's like a really, really good example of coloring or you did a lot of work for coloring because when you're doing coloring, you're not really doing any level of animation. You're kind of just filling in some stuff or just pressing a button over and over again. It's not to say that it should be devalued as a job, but it's just not really showing your talent as an animator because you're not really doing a lot of animation in that job. So in terms of adding in thesis work to your reel, keep it to keys, in-betweens, and potentially cleanup. Um, students at my school also often pay their workers too, so you can even have a monetary incentive to do this kind of work. And you'll be credited at the end of the film as well, and have the work you do in this collaborative effort be shown at thesis film showing events, which is really cool. <laughs> now, this opportunity has a multitude of positives, and I highly recommend that if you want to do this thing, and you have the option to your art school, you should at least work on one thesis film before you hit your fourth year. But although it's a great experience, it does come with some level of sacrifices. One, you have to meet deadlines. The faster and more efficient that you can get these scenes out to your students, and you have to keep high quality in mind, of course, the better and the more time you will allow other workers and these thesis students to work. Meaning, if you get your keys done fast, then someone doing tie-downs can get that out fast. Or if you're doing uh, cleanup animation, the better the colorists can work. And the faster that the colorists work, the more compositing can go into those scenes. When you start working high quality and at a good uh, pace and get the work out done as fast as possible, that allows everything in the chain to work better and to get done faster. Especially if you're all the way at the bottom and doing animation, the faster you can get your animation done at a good quality, the better everything else can move forward. It's like a huge wheel, pretty much. Number two, you also got to stay organized and you got to meet the correct specifications for these scenes. You got to make sure that you're using the right colors for the palette, the correct brush sizes, and that you're drawing on model as well. Character designs for thesis films are relatively simple, but getting the proper look that the student requested is so important to the production of the film. Number three, thesis assignments take a lot of time, depending on what job you are doing. When I was doing in-betweens for a film in my first year, one of the scenes had me in the labs until seven o'clock at night on a Friday, and it was almost gonna break me. But I put out a great product, and I am infinitesimally amounts proud of it. But if you can't manage your time like this, or you have other responsibilities such as a part-time job or home life responsibilities, I don't recommend taking work for thesis entirely. It shouldn't take the place of anything else in your life. It's more if you have the opportunity to do it and fit it in, and it's not going to overtake any of your regular assignments or any of your other responsibilities, do it. However, that being said, thesis work can be very flexible if you communicate to the student your situation. It is possible to get short scenes or few scenes when working with certain students and on certain projects, so you gotta keep that in mind too. Now, I have advice for thesis students coming from a worker specifically. So far, as of recording this, I have currently worked on four different films over two years of being in art school. I did one last year, and I'm doing three this year. <laughs> And thankfully, um, I've been working on these three films and I've accrued more um, since February of 2020, but thankfully that work hasn't outshone any of my schoolwork and it hasn't become a burden and a lot of the assignments that I get from these students also either don't, don't take me longer than a day sometimes, depending on what work, 
and they also don't come in at the same time. So one week I could be working on something for one student and get that done in a day, and another week I could be working on something else for another student and that could get done in a day. So coming into your fourth year and into a year long process is daunting as a thesis student. Um, but it is the job of your workers that you need to keep in mind that makes this process easier for you. They're supposed to make this burden better. And if they're not doing that, then they're not really doing their job. If they're making the process harder, then you kind of need to consider whether or not having them on your team is really best. Uh, if they just did a couple scenes for you and you don't want to give them any more work, that's your decision. You're the director of your project and you're the director of who gets to work on your project. It's also your worker's responsibility to put the best product out that they can. They are working for you. You are trying to make a quality production here. And if they're not putting out a lot of the work that you want, you, you have the liberty to like let them go or just to not give them work. And you don't have to tell them that they're doing a bad job. You could just say that you don't have any more work for them. Simple as that. They're, or you could be completely honest with them, but seeing as the situation doesn't really dictate for that, you kind of don't have to. They, they'll probably understand to be completely honest. And as long as they did work for you, that's all they can really ask for. You also need to hold this standard for all of your workers as it helps to produce a better quality film. No one should have a higher standard brought to them and someone else that should be given excuses. Everyone should be on the same level for all of your workers. If someone's underperforming, then you need to communicate that with them or you need to communicate better what you want from them. If uh, another student is achieving above and beyond, then great, great. You have an amazing product that's gonna get put into your film. But if, they're, if it seems like that overachiever is also stressing themselves out with a lot of the work, then you also need to communicate to them at the same time that they shouldn't be overstressing, that it's not that big of a deal. Like, has to be a fun process to a certain degree for everyone. And it also is putting together a really good product. And it's also important to note that this all lies within your direction of this film. You are the head honcho. You are the creator of this. And to a certain degree, if you don't communicate some of this stuff or you don't take these actions, then you're not gonna have a good film. These are your workers. You're directing them, you're leading them, you're showing, you're giving them an outline for what they need to do. So. That brings me into the idea of management. As a thesis student, you need to oversee every aspect of the production of your film and what your workers are doing, what assignments, how much they need to be paid, and if they have any questions regarding their scenes. This is a great place to uh, have email in the modern world. So even if a like schedules conflict with um, just class schedules and you can't meet up in real life to talk about anything, keeping an email chain with your workers is great because you also have a written record of everything that's said and they can go back to those emails and see all the directions for that scene, etc, etc. You don't even have to include it in the project files if you don't want to at that point because they already have it. So uh, meeting up in real life is great, but having an email chain is even better when it comes to stuff like that. Um, additionally, this means that you also need to be as organized as possible in your production. This means creating spreadsheets, Google share folders, organizing and labeling your email chains, and setting up documents properly for your workers to use. Project files must be set up correctly. Whether you're working in Harmony, TV Paint, Photoshop, uh, Animate, After Effects, literally anything. Um, Premiere, I don't know why someone would be animating in Premiere, but I guess if you're doing um, like editing in Premiere and you have someone doing that, you gotta set up those files correctly. That means you gotta label your layers, you gotta group your layers, you gotta make sure that uh, the brushes are in there for them to use, that you specify which brushes for which character. You gotta give, like, you got, you literally have to idiot proof this system. And I say that and it kind of sounds like bad, but it's so important. Every single aspect needs to be there so that your worker can decipher it. Every single one. Set up your prop, your documents properly. It's so important. 
um, as well as setting up a consistent style, palette, brush style, uh, brush style and size, this frame rate that you want to be animating at. It's all important when understanding the production of this product, as well as being able to share this information with your workers and provide them the necessary resources. So you should be giving them brush download files if it's pertaining to your project. If you're working in Photoshop, uh, give them exactly the brushes that you use for every single shot. Um, give them color palette sample frames or documents. So specifically, if you have a document that has all of the colors laid out so they can just pick and choose from each one for each section of the character. So you have like hair, skin, clothing, uh, like shirt one, shirt shade, uh, pants, pant shade, pant detail, stuff like that. Or you can even color in the first frame of the document that I've had some thesis students do for me, and they can just directly from that model work with the rest of the frames. That's also a really good way to do it. Providing tutorial sheets and character turnarounds. Character turnarounds are so important. If you don't have them sometimes, depending, um, especially if you have someone who is working from rough animation to cleanup, they will not know what to do. And sometimes that can mean guessing, and guessing is not good within this situation. So look over your animation. If it might be unclear for your worker to see what's going on, give them a character turnaround. It's like, the, you have to do it anyway. You have to do character turnarounds anyway if you're gonna be in this level of production. So you should have it, so just give it to them. Or give them a, a piece of reference that's what you want, or like another frame from a section of the film. A lot of shit that you can do for that. In that same point, providing tutorial sheets is so good too. Um, tutorial sheets are a great way to show the specific digital animation techniques that you want. When you're in art school, a lot of people do not come into art school knowing a lot of programs. I was very fortunate that when I came into my school, I knew pretty much the entire Adobe suite starting off. So I was pretty well versed in just understanding program UI, program technique, uh, ways to like cross platform with these programs and stuff like that. I've learned two new programs specifically for animation since I got here that I didn't have access to. Um, both of which I only really have a year of experience with. Uh, a year of experience is not a great level of experience to glean with a lot of techniques that are involved in these programs. So this is why that working on thesis is not just important in the sense that you're getting experience with animation, but also with experience with these programs. Thesis students uh, have a lot of time to experiment and a lot of time to really figure out what they want to do and these techniques in these programs. They have more time under their belt than you do. And that's a resource to a specific degree. Now, I kind of want to run off on a bit of a side point. Spreadsheets. <laughs> Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are so important when it comes to the pipeline of animation, of film, of anything. Anything that you're working on with multiple people, even if you're just working on it with yourself, it's important. In the first semester of my second year, I was tasked to do a solo film. And although it was originally supposed to be 20 seconds long, I knew I wanted to climb to a minute. And through the gift of project extensions that our teacher gave us and working over winter break, I was able to achieve this. But I can confidently say that I would have gotten completely lost if I didn't stay organized. So. From day one, I created a spreadsheet outlining everything I needed to achieve over time and what was completed and what needed to be prioritized. So this basically outlined from shot to shot to shot every single thing that I needed to get done. It showed um, character animation, what uh, character roughs, poses, block-ins if I needed them, um, thumbnails that I needed to do the status of my backgrounds, whether or not they were sketched, lined, colored, cleaned up, whatever, everything, every single little nuance of this project. And I had tw a little, a little over 20 shots in the entire film. So it wasn't like a humongous spreadsheet, but it was definitely pretty substantial. And it, it genuinely helped, like it helped a lot. 
understanding what you need to do and what you don't need to do is so important because plain and simple if you only have a few weeks left and there's a lot of red or a lot of blank spaces on your spreadsheet that tells you that you need to pick up the pace or if it's the complete opposite, you can maybe take a day off or achieve some stretch goals for your project. So to be completely honest, stay organized. It's what makes or breaks a project sometimes. And when it comes to something as important as your thesis, you're gonna wanna do things right the first time. <laughs> so in conclusion, I hope that this information finds you well for both workers and thesis students and good luck on any of your future projects.